This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 39. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soul. Welcome to yet another episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is Alex, your host, and today we will be talking about traffic, more specifically getting traffic to your website. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird today. I've got a flu going on here. It's been a really, really warm December in Montreal and a lot of people are getting sick around me as well, but not a big deal. I'll get through that. So traffic. When I first started my online marketing adventure back in 2007 um, and through the first few years, I've been bombarded by all these online marketing gurus with their case studies, how they launched a new product or a new course and made thousands of dollars overnight and how they made $300,000 in a week uh, launching a new product. And... Although their steps were interesting and they would explain a lot of stuff like how they would do up sales and uh, stuff like that, they never really talked about the main ingredient of that success online. And that main ingredient is getting traffic. You could put out whatever content you want. You could create the world's most amazing product and try to sell it online. But if no one is coming to your website, if no one is seeing your offer, if no one is reading your content, then you aren't getting anywhere. You're not going to make money. And that's kind of the goal of it all, right? So let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Now, there are two main ways of getting traffic as uh, usually people tend to separate them is free traffic and paid traffic. Paid traffic is, well, obviously something you pay for. Usually it comes from paid advertising such as PPC, pay-per-click. So running ads on Google using AdWords or running ads on um, Facebook, running ads on Bing and any other search engine. This is usually great source of traffic. However, it could cost a lot of money. And the biggest thing here is that if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose a lot of money. And I mean a lot of money overnight. You could lose your whole budget. You could drain your bank account if you don't set it up properly, if you don't test it properly. So having the money to get the traffic is not the only requirement. If you want to use PPC, go ahead. This could be amazing, but you need to learn how to set it up. You need to learn how to target your customers. You need to track every single conversion and try to make it better. And as I mentioned before, this could cost a lot of money. And my biggest issue with paid traffic is that when you turn off your campaign and you stop paying for the ads, money stops coming in. And that kind of sucks. This is why I usually prefer free traffic for my websites, but I'll talk about that and comparison between the two a little bit more later. Now, there's another way of getting paid traffic, which is simply um, buying traffic on uh, sites like Fiverr. Some people do that. They would pay $5 to get 1,000 visitors to your site, or you know, you could pay 20 bucks on some other site and get 10,000 people uh, sent to your website, 10,000 clicks. But here's the thing, though. These offers are completely useless. Now, here comes another secret uh, thing here, (laughs) another secret of getting traffic. Paid traffic or free traffic regardless is useless if it's not a targeted traffic. You can't sell a diet online and send people to the page who don't care about diets, who don't care about losing weight or staying in shape. You can't sell dog training to those who don't have dogs and don't care about dog training. You could send 20,000 people to your page talking about 20 most amazing things to do in New York City, but if those people aren't going to New York City and they don't care about it, it's kind of useless traffic. And usually what happens with sites like Fiverr, this is the kind of traffic you get. You just get numbers show up on your dashboard, but those numbers will not not convert. And if anything, they could even harm your website because Google will see that the bounce rate is incredibly high. Like 99.9% of those people will leave your site within the first second, which is 
pretty bad. So do not buy traffic from Fiverr. Do not buy this kind of traffic ever for your websites because it's completely useless. It will not convert. And in the end, you'll simply lose money paying for it. Now, let's move on to the strategies of getting traffic for free or almost free, very cheap uh, ways and effective ways of getting high quality targeted traffic to your websites. So the main free source of traffic, of course, is SEO, search engine optimization. If you are ranked high in the Google search results for certain articles, certain keywords, people will find you, people will read your content, people will interact with you and they would buy from you as well. You would get conversions, you would get email subscribers, you would get new customers and so on. However, this is probably one of the most um, complicated strategies because Google and other search engines never reveal their exact methods of ranking websites on the very first page of search engine results. So this is something you have to test and something you have to kind of Um, rely on sources that usually put themselves as experts in search engine optimization. There are a few websites like moz.com and a few others, and I will link to those websites in my show notes page for this episode. And there's some really, really great blogs and really great resources to help you understand how SEO works and kind of try to get your websites more optimized for naturally ranking in the first top 10 results of Google. However, if someone offers you a service of ranking your website as number one on Google search results, run away from that person. This is a scam. Nobody can ever guarantee a position for your keyword phrase and nobody could guarantee they could even rank you on the first page of Google. Nobody can make that guarantee. So beware, don't buy into those services either. Now, over the years, I've tried lots of different methods to get my pages ranked and uh, you know back back when i was starting online marketing uh, sometimes i tried um what we're now calling gray hat or even black hat methods acquiring backlinks to my websites um in uh, not really good ways Bas- basically paying some people to blast my links all over some blogs or blog comments or forums. And that was not a good idea. It still isn't. It's actually a horrible idea right now because Google has cut up to all of that and it will penalize your website. If not, it simply isn't going to rank it anywhere because they know those links are of low quality and that's really bad SEO. That's not SEO. This is waste of time and waste of money, waste of effort as well. So the most important thing that I've understood over these years is that you need to create great content for your websites. I can't stress this enough. This is the most important thing for your rankings, for your customers, for your visitors, for Google, for pretty much everyone. As long as you have great content, you have a fair shot of ranking well. Although content isn't the only thing that matters, but it is, in my opinion, the most important thing. If you want to go the SEO route, if you want to get natural rankings on search engines, if you want to get loads of people coming to your website for free, sticking to your website, reading your content, subscribe me to your email list, buying your stuff, you don't have a choice you have to create great quality original content. Now, another thing about content creation is you have to be consistent with it. I'm not saying that you need to create you know, an amazing article every single day for your blog, but I would suggest doing it at least once a week and more often it's possible. And once again, pay attention to the quality. It's not the quantity that matters as much as the quality. Personally, I've noticed that my longer articles usually rank a lot better. Let's say if I compare an article that's only 500 words long uh, to an article that's 2,500 words long, the one with uh, over 2,000 words will usually rank better uh, because it's obvious that a lot of work went into it, a lot of research, and that article is very detailed on whatever subject that it's about. Another thing that I stopped caring too much about is measuring how many keyword phrases I have in that article and trying to space them out. Um, Before, the belief was that you need to put two or three keyword phrases per every block of 100 words, some stuff like that. And 
honestly, I stopped caring about that. And this is when I really started ranking. So my philosophy on creating content is to write for the customer, to write for the visitor of your website. Now, when you write an article, try to read it subjectively from your visitor's point of view and try to understand, would you think this article is valuable? Did it teach you something new? Did it show you something new? Did it bring any new value into your life? Or did it feel like a sales pitch? Or did it feel like a watered down version of something you've read before? This is, guys, this is super important. And you need to make sure that you are 100% satisfied with the quality of what you produce. If you don't like your own content and you think it's really basic and it doesn't bring a lot of value, then your readers will think the same. This is guaranteed. Now, the search engines will also think the same. They will not like this kind of content. So work hard on the content. And I know that this is not a simple thing to do. It took me years and years of practicing to finally create content that I'm really proud of. No, a lot of articles that I write and a lot of blog posts, a lot of videos that I post, I'm really, really proud of the final result of the content that I'm posting out there. But it took a lot of time to practice and to kind of understand what people would like to read, what people don't like to read. So that's something that hasn't happened overnight and it won't happen overnight for you. But the main takeaway from what I've just mentioned is that you need to write for your audience not for the search engines, not for keyword phrases, not for something else. You have to write for your audience. You have to make sure that people like what you write, that they consume it, and that they keep coming back to your website because they like the kind of content you produce. So the next strategy is reusing your own content. You are not obliged to keep it as a blog post only. If it really is an amazing blog post and you're really proud of it, why not convert it into a video format? Why not convert it into an audio file and share it with others? You could post it up on YouTube. You could post it up on other websites. You could um, transform it into a PDF file and give it away to people. Or, you know, you could offer it as a bonus to something and people will enjoy that. Now, what happens that uh, there are specific websites that like slideshows or there are other websites where you could upload PDF files as eBooks as I already mentioned, there is YouTube and other video channels where you could upload videos. And what it does, it gives a lot more exposure for your content that you've already created. So repurpose your content as much as possible, especially if it's really good content. And you'll see more people coming to your website from YouTube, from SlideShare, from other um, different different places all over the internet. And see, this is one of the reasons I did this podcast. This is yet another format to share my um, content. Well, I actually create content specifically for this podcast, but you see, I'm not trying to get people just reading my articles. I'm trying to get them listening to my podcast so mm -hmm. eventually they could also read my articles and look through my website and so on. This helps a lot. Now, what I do with this podcast as well, which is kind of, you know, I've, uh, I'm a little bit behind on that. I should pay more attention and invest more time in doing that. But usually I take the episodes of my podcast, I turn them into a video Basically, I just slap an image on the audio file, I save it as a video, and I upload it to YouTube. And guess what? I'm getting more people coming to my website because they heard my podcast, not on iTunes like most of you, or through my website directly. They found it on YouTube while searching for something different. They found my podcast, they liked it, and now they're listening to it um, on my website and you know they're subscribing to my email list. So once again, repurpose your content and try to distribute it to other places, especially if it's great content. Another thing that you should be doing already if you have a website is building your email list. This is probably the easiest way of getting people to read your content, to listen to you, to watch your videos. Because people sign up to your email list simply because they like your content. They like you or they like the stuff that you share with them or stuff that you teach them. So whenever you write a really good piece of uh, content or you produce a video, you could simply send it 
to your subscribers, right? Don't treat your email list like an ATM machine. Treat it as a place where you could help people get good content and learn something new. So once you start building your email list on demand, you could send them uh, a quick note. Hey guys, check it out. I just created this new article and it's uh, you know blowing up internet because the content is so amazing. Just give it a read. Let me know what you think. So building an email list could be free or could be paid. Usually you have to pay money for it, especially if you need some kind of automation. But you could start with MailChimp completely free and get up to 2,000 subscribers. That will not cost you a single penny. Um, I'll add a link to MailChimp as well in my show notes page. So if you haven't already, start your email list right away this is super important and it's still one of the best ways of getting traffic to your website just imagine something happens your uh, host shuts you down your websites go down for whatever reason your whole business falls down you will most likely still have access to that email list of people so you could even start building from scratch you could start a brand new website and you'll already have an audience uh, you know loyal following of people who like you and who like what you produce so guys this is also super important i know that everything i mentioned in this episode i say it's super important but building an email list it is huge this is something that i've done before something that i stopped doing and i regret it a lot and uh, well i'm back to building a new emailing list so I'm back on track. But yeah, if you haven't started your email list, start it right now. And this is also a great way to get visitors to your content. Now, once your content is out there, don't forget that people will not just start coming to it. First of all, you need to start ranking well. And what helps for your rankings and what helps to get more people coming to your sites is sharing it on social media, of course. Now, don't spam all your accounts and try to make it more relevant write unique descriptions of your content when you're posting it, but posting it on Twitter, on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Instagram, or, you know, whatever platform suits your your marketing plan and whatever online platform suits what you're doing, use it wisely. Build relationship with your audience, build relationships with other influencers in your niche and share that content out there for other people to see. I know this is a little bit far-fetched, but imagine you write an article about something, then one of your Facebook friends actually likes it. Then some of his friends saw that he liked that article, they'll go read it as well. They'll love it so much that they'll post it on their Facebook and they'll reshare it. And, you know, as I'm as I'm saying, it's far-fetched. Uh, nobody knows how many likes and, and visitors and shares you're going to get from that. But it is possible. It has happened to a lot of people and it happens on a daily basis. You need to get it out there. You need to make sure that other people, new people see your content. And using social media is one of the great ways to do that. Now, another way of using social media to get people to your uh, content, a great idea, is reaching out to people who are also in your niche and reaching out to the influencers in your industry. Basically, if you are in a specific niche, you're probably already following some people who are in the same niche or considered as experts. And if you aren't following them, it's not that hard to find them on Google+, on Facebook, on Twitter. Follow those people, reach out to them and let them know that you wrote that amazing article on the same subject that they just blogged about a week ago and tell them, hey, check out my article. It's on the same subject that you talked about and I think you will find it useful or helpful or interesting. And if your content is good and if the person is interested, there is a chance that they will share your article or even talk about it in their next blog post, which could be amazing. This could bring in a lot of traffic. This could make you a superstar online. So that's not something that you should be neglecting. And now don't be scared approaching those people, uh, approaching experts and approaching successful ones. This is what I do for my podcast. It's scary every single time, but... I don't really care. You know, what's the worst thing that would happen? They wouldn't reply to me or they would say, I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. But I simply contact um, successful people, successful entrepreneurs, and I invite them to my podcast. 
I contact successful entrepreneurs and influencers and let them know about my podcast. And, you know, it has happened that I've got some shares and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of new traffic and new people came to my podcast because another influencer that wasn't one of my guests actually tweeted about one of my episodes that they listened to personally and they enjoyed because I reached out to them and I said, hey, you are talking about email uh, list building and I've recorded this amazing episode with my guest and we talk about that subject check it out I think you'll like it sure enough the person liked it and shared it which resulted in a lot of new people being exposed to my content exposed to my uh, podcast which (laughs) in the end resulted in them becoming my followers as well because they like the kind of content that I produce so there you go guys reach out to your niche experts and to your industry leaders they're human just like you so there is a chance they'll connect with you and they will share your content free of charge of course now another thing that i do sometimes to create good content and to kind of have an idea that it will be liked what i do is i try to find amazing articles in my niche i read those articles and usually those articles are outdated and they've been posted a few years ago and they're still ranking really, really well on the first page of Google search results. So what I would do is that I would create um, a new version of that article. Basically, I would blog about the same subject, but I would put in more research, I would put in more recent information in it, and I would make it 10 times better than the original article that was posted. Now, this is something that you should carefully listen to. I don't copy paste that article. I don't rewrite the article. I just take the main idea of the article or the main subject and I write my own article from scratch, just making it a lot better. Now, if possible, I try to find people who are either linking to that article or who shared it and I reach out to them as well and tell them, hey, I've seen that you've shared this article or you linked to that article uh, back in 2013 So it's kind of outdated, but check this out. I created a brand new article in 2015, almost 2015 soon. And this article is a lot more detailed and it's on that specific subject. So, you know, if you think it could be a good addition to your um, link or to your audience, please feel free to share it or to update your, uh, the links on your, on your own blog post. And sometimes people do that as well. People, do like the content and they do see that it's updated, it's a lot fresher and it's a lot more detailed, so they will reshare it or they will change the link from their blog now to my blog post instead of some other blog post that they, you know, linked before. And this is good for getting new, um, new customers, new readers, new audience, as well as for your SEO because you're getting a strong backlink from an established website, from an established blog post, which is really great. Now, Another thing about updating is don't forget to go back to your own older content and update it. This is something that I see uh, being done a lot uh, from a lot of influencers, once again, and industry leaders. One of them is Brian Dean from backlinko.com. By the way, amazing website. I've learned a lot of stuff from it and I keep learning. What Brian does is he always comes back to his order older articles, even from half a year ago, from a year ago, from two years ago. And he updates those old blog posts with new relevant information. What this does is that it keeps the audience interested and keep on reading his blog. Because if he gets a new, um, a new visitor to one of his old articles and the person starts reading the article and realizes that it was posted almost two years ago, the person will probably think, okay, maybe those strategies don't work anymore. This is quite outdated. So, you know, they just close the page and look for something more relevant, something new. By updating the articles, Brian lets the visitor know that this is not outdated. This is being updated all the time and it's as relevant as it could be. So this kind of strategy helps getting your new fans and your new visitors sticking to your website and reading your content, consuming your content, because they know that you are keeping stuff updated. 
This also helps Google see that you're working hard on your website and you're serious about it. So chances are they will give you some kind of a boost in rankings if you are doing these updates and you're keeping your website updated. If you're getting boost in the ranks, you're getting a boost in traffic to your website. Now, last but not least, this is something that I still do. I go on other blogs and I comment on their content. I leave comments on their blog posts. Usually those links are not as important as any other kind of links. And in, in many cases, Google doesn't really value them much, but it does bring new visitors to my page. And I, I because I'm tracking my traffic and I see that people actually click those links, click on my name in the comment bar to see who I am and to see what my website is about. Now, the secret to this strategy is that you need to genuinely participate in the conversation. You can't just find a whole bunch of articles on similar subjects as yours and leave comments such as good stuff, man. I like your writing. I like your blog, blah, blah, blah. Uninteresting. And this is just, you know, seems spammy. You actually have to read the article that they wrote and you have to either ask a relevant question on the subject, maybe ask them to clear up a few things that you didn't understand in the article, maybe add a new point to the article, just tell them, hey, I loved your article about training dogs, but here is another little thing that I do to help me train my dog. And you explain this thing that you do. Basically, what you're doing, you're adding value to their own content. People like that because, well, as I mentioned, you're adding value, you're providing some new kind of information, and it does not seem spammy because you're genuinely... Uh, participating in the conversation and you are honestly liking their content. This is why you're commenting in the first place. So don't comment on blogs that you don't like. Don't comment on blogs that you don't read. Comment honestly on stuff that you actually enjoy yourself and try to participate in a conversation. Sometimes those link could actually be do follow and sometimes those link will give you a boost in search engine rankings. Sometimes they won't, but you'll see people clicking on that link with your name on it. And, you know, because they like also your reply, they like your comment and they want to see what you're all about. So they're going to go and see your website. Don't neglect this strategy. This still works really well, but you have to be honest and you have to be genuine about it. All right, so that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed the information and I will be putting up a show notes page at extrapodcast.com slash 39. This is where I'll put up a list of all the strategies. I will put up some amazing links as well and resources that you could check out that will give you some ideas on getting more traffic to your website. If you liked this episode and if you like my show, please do subscribe to the Extra Paycheck Podcast by simply going to extrapodcast.com slash iTunes. This is where you could also leave a review and a rating for the show, which helps me tremendously. Thank you so much once again for tuning in and I'll talk to you next Monday.